three years ago, almost to the day, but not quite. Walked from here where my cousin used to live on the night that Nier's Tavern was gonna close forever. Forever. It's a whole nother big story. I'll get to it soon. It's like one of the last great things in the in the neighborhood. Nears Tavern, 190 years. This place has been open since 1829. Goodfellas was shot here. Anthony Bourdain did an episode of Parts Unknown here. This is so much a piece of the Woodhaven, Queens community. The building was bought in 2018 by a new owner, and the rent almost tripled. Gordon is set to close up shop on Sunday because he says he cannot afford to pay his staff beyond then. We understand that Mayor Blasio is going to be coming here to Nears at 8 o'clock this evening. A deal has been struck. The mayor came to the rescue. It appears that he's made good on his word to come to the rescue of Nears and keep this bar open. Here's the other story for the other time. This is the tale of Nears Tavern. Friday night, January 10th, 2020. The air is electric. News cameras, the mayor of New York, the chocolatier, the pizza man, my cousin, me, my wife, so many more. A horde of us walking a speed between leisurely and briskly under the train tracks, all toward the bar with nine lives. Okay, so let's rewind a little bit, let's rewind. I was born in Woodhaven, Queens. A hundred years ago, it was an industry town, sustained by a factory and two racetracks, Centerville and the legendary Union Course. But both of the courses eventually folded, giving way to the Belmont and the nearby Aqueduct racetracks. Both still around today. Anyway, Woodhaven's not an industry town anymore. Most of its people work in Manhattan or one of the thousands of Jamaica Avenue storefronts or nearby JFK. A few marks of Union Course do still remain. One, there's the neighborhood grid. If we take a look at this map of Woodhaven here, we can see at 78th Street to 85th Street, the grid is different. So if you were driving along one of the avenues, say in this case, 88th Avenue, and you hit 76th Street, you could not continue straight to go on the avenue. You'd have to make two right angles here to keep going on the avenue because this section of the avenue was added much later than the rest of the grid because this whole section of the grid that you see to the right, all these houses, used to not be houses. It used to be the site of Union Racecourse. Imagine living in these houses knowing that you're living on the site of one of the most famous horse tracks in America. And Nears Tavern to the left used to be prime seating for spectators to sit down, have a beer, maybe a meal, and watch the horse races on what is now this 76th Street, but used to be the western stretch of Union Course. I'll get back to that. A ghost of the horse track southeastern curve still remains at Clemente Court. Most people today think it's a driveway and it's sometimes used as one, but in reality, it's a city street that follows the same exact path as the horse track curve, where up to 70,000 people would watch the races. Jockeys would gallop up and around the northern wide to the straightaway of the western stretch, now 78th Street. There, the horses would speed by the crowd at Nears Tavern. Finally, we arrive. Nears, the oldest bar in New York City. Yes, it's older than McSorley's, but Queens wasn't part of NYC yet. Opened in 1829, it outlasted Union Course, became a showroom for Mae West in the 1900s, a speakeasy in the 30s, hosted a bowling alley in a hotel, and became the backdrop for iconic scenes in Scorsese's Goodfellas. Most notably, I think it outlasted even its own demise three years ago. Thursday, January 9th, 2020. It was the middle of the night when I start seeing all these articles and people are messaging me articles and I'm seeing them on Facebook feeds. Yeah, I'm a millennial, I use Facebook. And it was three years ago by now, all right? All right. All these articles about historic Nears Tavern closing down. The watering hole is gone, it's gonna be gone. Apparently a new developer bought the place and they increased the rent multifold. Now, even a 50% rent increase is something most businesses cannot survive abruptly. So for Nears Tavern, which is not on the main strip, it's not on Jamaica Avenue, it's a few blocks deep into the residential area of Woodhaven, to get a rent hike like that, it's like writing its death on the wall. Anyway, I go to work and I get back. I'm walking through Woodhaven and I'm, I'm, I'm ambling toward the tavern. I gotta go to the post office, but I'm making sure that I pass Nears. I see Ed Wendell out front giving an interview to New York One. ...in this area built up around uh, Nears Tavern. It's, in, it's inconceivable at this point. He loves this town a little bit more than I do. 
meaning maybe he loves it more than anyone. He's the president of the Woodhaven Historic Society and knows almost every little thing about the place top to bottom, including the history of Nears and how special it is. He's the one that told me about the uh, about the curve of Union Course still existing as, uh, as Clemente Court. So I'm like, hey, how's it going? How's everything? He's kind of down and out. He's looking at the sidewalk telling me, you know, it doesn't look good. He's been in the bar with Loy. Loy's been in there talking over everything with everyone he can, looking for investors, looking for uh, city agencies to help save the place, looking for news to raise awareness. But uh, but it doesn't look good. Loy now, Loy is the owner of the place. And Loy, you know, we don't know each other well. I see him in the bar sometimes. But he feels like distant family to me because like my family, I mean, I was born here. I was born and raised in New York, New York boy. But uh, like my family, he emigrated from Jamaica to the States to, to make a new life for himself. And he joined city fire department, was a full-time firefighter, then retired, and took up the hardest job you can have in the city. I think statistically anywhere in the country, owning a restaurant. He bought historic Nears Tavern sometime in the mid-2000s. So I go into the bar and I'm like looking around, taking in taking in everything. What I think is the last time I'm, I can smell the the old mahogany of the bar top. I can I can see where the scenes were shot in Goodfellas. I'm looking at the bar stools where I and my cousin sat and my wife sat and my family members sat and my friends, all these times. And I'm thinking, well, these were nice memories. This bar is going to be gone in a couple days. I see Loy and I say hi. I ask him how it's going. He's kind of looking at the floor too. We're, we're both looking at our shoes and he's like, you know, we're doing what we can. We're trying to raise awareness. We're trying to find investors. I ask him if, if they'll just move, if they'll try to reopen somewhere else. And he's like, no, because this is Nears Tavern. This is where, you know, a hundred something years ago, people used to buy their beers and sit and watch the races from the second floor, from the, from the window on the first floor. This is where, where Goodfellas was shot. This is where I, me, Sean, this is where I sat so many nights having a great time with my friends and my family. And this is crazy. This is actual footage of that conversation because there were mad news cameras all over the place that day. So he thinks if it closes, he's not going to open up anywhere else. And I'm like, I'm, I give him my condolences. I give him my sympathies. I got to get going. I buy one of the few remaining uh, Nears Tavern t-shirts because I'm like, I got to have... I gotta have some memento other than the memories. I mean, this place, this bar was a place where I would pick up people from the airport who are visiting, and Nears Tavern would be the first place I take them to because it is not like a typical tourist attraction, but it's a great bar. It's a great quintessential local New York experience, and it's just a, objectively a good place to grab a drink and have a bite. So I buy my Nears T-shirt. I'm heading out the front. I see Claudia from New York One, and she she interviewed me a little bit because she saw that I was talking to Loy. Um, I kind of stumbled through my answers like I'm like I'm stumbling right now. Probably even worse because I was, yo, I know it's local news, but I was like a little star stricken, star struck. You see what I mean? I'm tripping over my words like that with her. So I give like the best interview I can give, which is probably not adequate at all. It's like one of the last great things in the in the neighborhood. Oh. And then I, uh, I head outside. I say bye to Ed. I ask Ed, I'm like, so what's going on? Are we going to have a, a big send-off for Nears? And he tells me they're doing one on Saturday. And I'm like, damn. Shoot, man. I gotta, I'm flying out on Saturday morning. I got a flight. Ed being Ed, with his little smile, he's like, you know we're going to be out here basically all day and all night for the next three days because we're not, we got to enjoy Nears while it's here. So come out tomorrow night. I'm like, golden. Bet. Let's go. So I head to the post office, I head home, I call my cousin, I tell him, Zach, Zach, remember Nears Tavern? I've taken him out to Nears several times. We, we love the place, we have good memories there, late nights, early mornings. He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm like, it's closing forever. He's flabbergasted, he's like, we gotta go, we gotta go, we gotta go, I'm off Saturday. I'm like, dude, I'm flying out Saturday, we gotta go tomorrow. He's like, all right, all right, I'm changing my plans. We're going to the, we're going to Nears Tavern tomorrow. Got to enjoy it one last time. And you know it's closing down forever, so we're gonna enjoy it, but we're gonna be sad. So be it. So be it. I go to sleep. The plans are made. Next day, I'm scrolling through Facebook. I'm seeing 
I'm seeing like mirages. These, these have to be visions. Am I still asleep? Am I still dreaming? I must be seeing mirages. This, this is a hallucination. I'm seeing all these headlines. Mayor vows to keep Nears open. Nears... Nears enters negotiations. All these things like this. I see the mayor got involved and I'm like, can he do that? I don't know. I don't know. So I, I dash out the door. I start sprinting towards Zach's apartment. So while I'm running, I call up Schmidt's Chocolate to see if they're opening. They check out my video on Schmidt's same channel. Uh, and she's like, Schmidt's Chocolate. And I'm like, you guys open? This is Sean. And she's like, no, I got. I mean, we're open. We're going to close soon because I got to go to Nears. So I was like, I'll be there real soon. Stay open for me. Anyway, I head over to Zach's. Like 10 dozen blocks later, whatever. I'm outside. I'm banging on his door. I'm panting because I just ran. But I'm, I'm like so full of energy. He comes down. I start shaking him. I'm dancing around like Bruce Lee. I mean, I think I am. I think I'm like doing the shuffle, but I'm probably look like an idiot. He's like, what, 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 what the hell? I'm like, you, you, yo, have I got a story for you? I tell him what's going on. I tell him the bar might be saved, that they're entering negotiations right now, that they, they found some investors or something. I'm not really sure what's going on because I'm just glancing over all these, because I'm just glancing over all these news articles. So we're running to the bus. We get to Woodhaven Boulevard. And there's like fire in the air. There's fire in our in our lungs and our souls. And we're like, dude, what's going on? Anyway, the bus door opens. The bus is full. We cram ourselves in like sardines. It's rush hour. It's evening by now. Like there, there's the school rush. There's the after work rush. But there's a little thing in my head. I'm like, yo, a lot of these people are going to Nears, aren't they? We get to Woodhaven Boulevard and Jamaica Avenue. I'm like, yo, we got to take a detour. I go to Schmidt's Chocolate. If you saw my other video about Schmidt's Chocolate, you know why it's so special. I want to see Margie, who owns the place. She's a gem. I know my cousin's going to get a kick out of her because she's sort of like our mothers. Both of our mothers. I'm talking about sweet and high energy. High! The chocolate's good. I'm going to meet my wife and Zach's girl is coming. Um, so I'm like, yo, let's get him some chocolate. Also, I can see Margie. See if she knows what's up. Ask her what's going on with Nears get her take on everything because she you know she's a local business owner and she knows everyone else who's a local business owner around the place we get into schmidt's chocolate she's like hello all friendly like she always is my cousin zach gets a kick out of her we start picking out some chocolate in her special way she's telling us that we're picking all the wrong things for for my wife and for his girl blah blah, blah. let me stay on target here so we ring up pay and i'm like you know did you hear the news I say about the mayor? The mayor apparently stepped in. He's trying to help save Nears. She's like waving her hands dismissively. She's like, what the hell? you know, she's like, forget him. What can he do? He can't do anything. And of course, you know, it's not like the mayor doesn't have any constitutional power to forbid a business from closing or to forbid a, a landlord from raising the rent. So she's going on and on. So we got our boxes and bags of chocolate. And I'm like... I ask Margie, I say, you're going to come out to Nears? And she says, uh, yeah, she'll be right behind us. She's going to close up. We're her last customers. See you later. Mayor de Blasio is going to be coming here to Nears at 8 o'clock this evening. But very telling, his comments, what he said earlier today. Take a listen to this. This is a 190-year-old business. This is inappropriate. If you want to make a buck, this is not the way to do it. And the landlord could do something good for New York City by backing off and allowing you to continue at a rent level that is actually achievable. Those are the words of Mayor Bill de Blasio earlier today. So we head out. We're walking down Jamaica Avenue. My wife hasn't showed up yet. She's taking a train from work. His girl hasn't showed up. So I'm walking down. I'm like, let's stop at Sal's. Stay tuned for the Sal's video. We'll grab a slice of pizza. Neither of us have had dinner. We'll just sit there, chill out, shoot the breeze, have some good pizza until my wife comes and until your girlfriend comes. So we dip into Sal's. There I see Dom. God rest his soul. Sal's is the best pizza in Woodhaven. Arguably the best in Queens. And, uh... I asked Dom, I said, Dom, have you heard about Nears? What's going on? He has his phone. He's been looking at it the whole time. He takes out his phone and he's like, look, look, my nephew's at Nears right now. There's the mayor. So I'm looking at his phone. His nephew is in Nears Tavern. Phone camera on the mayor. In the bar, talking to Loy, talking to who I suppose are the owners of the building. 
and I don't know what's going on, but there he is. There's Bill de Blasio. And Sal is like, I mean, and Dom is like, yeah, the mayor's in there right now. Holy Satoli. Yo. This is crazy. So I'm like, did de Blasio figure something out? Dom doesn't know. Someone else walks in the pizzeria and he's like, nobody knows yet. But yo, Bill de Blasio walked in there to negotiate. Right in there on his own. No security detail. That's debatable. But you know, I'm kinda I'm kinda lit up by that. I'm like, damn, you know, props to de Blasio. For all his faults, that's that's uh that deserves some respect there. So we go sit in the back, we're having our pizza. This woman who works there, I don't know if she's related to Dom or what, but she's always working there. She comes out from the back room where they make the dough. And I was like, and I was like, yo, check out Dom. His nephew is in the bar. He's, he's live streaming um, the mayor in the bar on his, and, and Dom's watching it on his phone. She made some wisecrack about, well, that's better than porn. A lot of people will be watching porn on their phone these days and we're laughing, blah, blah, blah. My wife gets there. Zach's girlfriend gets there. They both show up around the same time. Me, my wife, and Zach, we've been to Nears a million times. We love the place. And we're catching his girlfriend up on what went down, what's going down with Nears Tavern. And while I'm saying all of it, I'm thinking like, dude, she probably thinks that we're some drunks, that we're like real lushes to be all up in arms about this bar closing. I try to like start tempering how I'm talking about it, but it's not working. I'm, I'm excited, I'm excited, because we don't know now. Are we going to a funeral? Or are we going to just like another birthday party or like a damn resurrection celebration for Nears Tavern? So I'm just like, you know, it's, yeah, it's kind of a good old place. It, it, it sucks that it'll probably be gone, but, but, but maybe there's hope. Who, who knows, who knows, who knows? All of a sudden, Dom yells at us from the register. They're letting people in. Hey, boys, boys, they're letting people in. So I spring from the booth. So does Zach. So does my wife. And his girlfriend's like follows us like, yo, what? I start knocking on the countertop next to Dom. I'm like, you coming? He doesn't know. Closing time's not for another few hours at the pizzeria. He's like, maybe I'll see you way after closing if they're still open. I'm like, all right. So we head outside. Once again, the air is electric. A horde, ourselves included, like a whole bunch of zombies. We're walking briskly under the train tracks, all of us, toward Nears Tavern. We break off the avenue down into the residential area. Get to the tavern. There's news trucks. There's jibs with cameras going up and down. There's cars double, triple parked. It's crazy. Long way down the block, a whole crowd. We go around the corner to the side door. I'm about to open it. This woman just trips out right into my arms and hugs me. And I'm like, I'm already getting welled up with emotion. But we're embracing, and, I, and, I, and I'm asking her, like, my mouth to her ear. I'm like, is it saved? Is it saved? We've just confirmed with the mayor's office that a deal has been reached to keep Nears open. And she squeezes me tighter, and she's like, it's saved! It's saved! I'm like, what happened? She tells me that they agreed on a, on a, a reasonable rent increase, and it's locked in for 10 years. And this was the result of a sort of day-long, locked-in-a-room-style negotiation between the landlords, Loy, the Queen's Chamber of Commerce, mainly Thomas Greck, and Mayor Bill de Blasio. He was behind the bar serving drinks, giving himself a little, little bartender experience. Who knows if he was any good. By the time I got to the bar, he was gone. He wasn't bartending. He'd made his way out to, uh, to let the neighborhood celebrate. So we get inside the tavern. I'm trying to make my way to the bar, and my wife sees Margie. She's like, hey, there's Margie from Schmitz. So she breaks off from me. She goes and talks to Margie. Margie's all excited. She can't believe what just happened either. I get to the bar. I flag down one of the bartenders that I recognize. So I go up to Lisa. The bar is busy as hell. It's as packed as I've ever seen it because everybody's so happy that Nier stayed open. So I look at her and I order some aguardiente, which is an in-joke because she's always telling me they don't have it. She curses at me. There's a twinkle in her eye and a twinkle in mine because we are both so happy this place stayed open. I get us some regular drinks that they do have and make my way and make my rounds. I run into an old friend named Alan Smith. He's an architect and a historian. He tells me, he tells me the right way to pronounce Niers is Niers. Of course, it's a German bar, but everybody says Niers. That's a little trivia for you. Um, and hundreds of people that night were calling it Niers. My cousin is showing his girlfriend all the spots where they shot the Goodfellas scenes. 
They're enjoying their drinks. Many there raised toast to Bill de Blasio. Many of them went along the lines of something like, real loser, great guy. And the latter part was meant, because though well-intentioned always, he was certainly a polarizing mayor. But, love him or hate him, today he showed an undeniable goodwill to a place most mayors of this 8 million resident city never even give a thought to. I see Loy walking the floor with a child in his arms, simultaneously accepting everyone's cheers and managing the restaurant, which did not die this weekend. I feel like I have an extended family now. I was like, oh man, my family has grown. <laughs> and the owner says he hopes the tavern will now serve as a reminder to the entire neighborhood of the importance of supporting all the local businesses. From Woodhaven, Queens, Ali Bauman, CBS2 News. I say a quick hello and I congratulate him. He's on top of the world. I wonder though, whether this 10 year extension is a welcome reprieve or just prolonging a heavy burden. It is not easy owning a bar or a restaurant in New York. So maybe it's a dash of this and a dash of that for him. I don't know. I turn around, I see Pete Saddam, the owner of Sal's. He's standing there with his thick mustache. He still has his self-appointed uniform on. It's under his winter coat. And I'm like, Dom, you closed early, huh? He just smiled and nodded. He said, I had to for this. Someone bumps into me and makes eye contact and they're smiling. Great job on New York One. And I'm like pretty sure they're being sarcastic because somebody sent it to me and I was like a bumbling idiot. I step out on the sidewalk and I see Ed Wendell holding court. It's the very same spot where a day prior, we'd been down in the dumps about this place closing. Our faces telegraphed the same thing to each other. Is this real? I asked him if he had anything to do with it. He's like, no, no, Loy and the other guys worked it out. They've been working on it all day. It's a miracle. And man, it might just be a miracle. Nears Tavern is the oldest bar in New York City, and it's the greatest. Owner Loyson Gordon's own personal story and the story of Nears Tavern is a unique microcosm of the American dream. It's littered with sweat, tears, property developers, inequity, ignorance, pandemics, but also nights like January 10th, 2020. As rare as they may be, where elected officials stick up for people who need it the most, and where a community sticks up for each other and saves a beloved place on its brink of death. You might be going to the parade or the great Donovan's pub. That's another story. Stay tuned for my burger review. But if you want to venture a little farther out this St. Patrick's Day, any day, sit where De Niro and Pesci sat in Goodfellas, stumble up to karaoke, feel the restored mahogany of the oldest bar in the city, meet the nicest owner you can meet, and because you will be back, make your own stories at Nears Tavern. I'm going to make one right now. <laughs>